Tonight's going to be more of a sicha um, than a, uh, a regular shir. There's no sheet, just uh, some thoughts that uh, you might have heard uh, me say before in other contexts. But uh, it's just like a schmooze to get us ready for the uh, three weeks, to get us for this uh, time period. Uh, I said, that you should, if, if you can, <coughs> the first thought, I just gave a Parsha shir. It's on the OU website now. Listen to the first thought if you can. And the Parsha is Pinchas. It talks about why Dafka Pinchas is uh, always the first Shabbos, the first Parsha during the three weeks. What does it have to do with it? Pinchas Elio, um, three names for Elio, Hanavi, Tishbi, Geladi. Uh, feel free to listen to, uh, to that thought or uh, anything, but uh, helps us get in the mood. Okay, the Gemara tells us in Mesechas Nida on Daf Lamed that we learn all of Torah in utero, as we know, and then, as we're born, we forget all of it because the Malach wants us to forget all of it. But then there's the, a, a line at the end of that Gemara. At the end of that Gemara. Kiman Shabbat Avir, Kavit Shabbat Avir Olam, Bamalach, Vesidral, Alpebu, Meshacho, Kaltar, Akula, Veneyosa, Mishama, Shemashbin, Osa. We're not sent out until we make an oath. Until we make an oath. <laughs> What's the oath? Based on Psukkin that we say in Aleinu, Kivachatech, Kabar, Kishavak, Kalashon. What's the oath? What oath do we say? We all took a shvua as we were born to be a tzaddik. So the question is, if we are, all took a shvua, if we would all be tzaddikim, so then where's the base of Migdash? Right, we obviously haven't been doing our job perfectly. Chazal tell us that any door to the base of Mikdash has not been rebuilt in. It's Ki'ilu. It was Nechrab. Why we read we read uh say from Malachim and we read other uh you know uh, Navim Yeshayo and Yermio and we're like, how could they be so silly and about Zara and we would never have done that? Now we like kind of think like they're so they're such chotim. But Chazal tell us if we don't have the base of Mikdash, we're no better. Because we're not zochet to, to have it built. So what's holding us back? What's holding us back from fulfilling our potential? Because if every Jew would fulfill their potential, then we would have it back. Then we would have a base of Mikdash. So I'd just like to talk about three ideas, three elements that maybe we have to work on, and in that way get back our potential, and that way get back the base of Mikdash. Number one. The first element to recognize is that it's hard to change. You know, we can think about this also, by the way, the 21 days between Shavasa Batamas and Tisha B'av are parallel to the 21 days between Rosh Hashanah and Hoshana Rabbah. It's the hachana. It's a hachana. It's a preparation. And uh, we have to, to do our best to, to, uh, <coughs> to prepare. But point number one to mention, the danger of rote. Sakana Sahergel. The Sakana of, we get into a mode in life and we kind of like go with it. We're kind of like, we are who we are. This is how I daven. This is how I talk. This is how I live. And we get into this mode and it's hard to change. It's hard to change. Rabbi Yonah writes, I don't, I don't know, if, I didn't give you a sheet, but I'll give you all the marmakomos. Rabbi Yonah writes in Pirkei Avos, on the Mishnah in the first parak, in Moach Shav Emasai, right? If not now, when? Rabbi Yona says, imagine if you have a tree. When you plant the tree at the beginning, it's still small, it's thin. You can move it around a little bit to make sure it's growing the right way and where the sun is. But as the tree gets bigger and stronger and taller, you can't move it. It's kind of set in its ways. It gets stuck. You try to move a tree, it's like, oh. When we're younger, before we get into certain habits, we're like that young tree. We're able to move. We're able to be flexible. We're able to, to accomplish, to, to change, to improve. But once we get set in our ways, we're like that thick tree. It's hard if the tree's going crooked and it's been growing crooked for a while, it's hard to move it. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. When a person is younger, it's easier. But it will be harder. 
we get into a mode. The Masulasi Sharon says that naturally we don't want to change. Naturally, we like to be who we are. That's in the fourth parak. He says, we are inherently Teba Ha'adam Kaved Ma'od. Lo Yachwot Ha'adam Derech Molacha. This is the natural state of who we are. It's hard to redirect. We're on autopilot. We get used to things. We get used to who we are. And it's hard to break out. All right, we spoke this morning in my shir. Spoke a little bit about chushim. The most famous story of chushim. Did we do this in famous gemaras yet? Did we do this in famous gemaras yet? I'll check my list. No, we didn't. Okay, let's have tomorrow, if I remember. Tomorrow. Chushim. Who's Chushim? We know Chushim, the son of Dun. Dafyud Gimel and Sota. We know the story. All the Shvatim go up to Maras and Machpela to bury Yaakov Avinu. And they get there, and then lo and behold, who's there at the door? Asa. Haven't seen Asa in a long time. Since Parshas Vayishlach, we haven't seen Asa. And all of a sudden, in Parshas Vayechi, it's not in the Torah, but he comes there. And he says, sorry, this spot's taken. You can't reserve a spot. Oh, yes, I can. I can. It's my spot. Right? Your father buried Leah in, in his spot, and this is my spot. So he says, what are you talking about? Your father sold it. Your father sold it. So like, no, you only sold one part, not this part. Okay. Prove it. Where's the star? Back in Mitzrayim. Okay, they send Naftali back to go to get the Shtar Mechira from Mitzrayim. Then comes Chushim. What happened? Chushim prayed the Don Tamanave, the Yikir and Leudne. He was a little deaf. Amalu, my high. He says, What's going on? They must have known sign language even then. But Amrulay, come, Akiv, hi, the Azan Naftali, you're in Mitzrayim, you know? That's, we're waiting. Asaf Sia, we had to go back to get the Shtar. And Amalu, he says, We had to Asi Naftali, you're in Mitzrayim, you're Avi Abba Muta Bibizayim. Asaph is going to stand here while my grandfather's not being buried? What are you talking about? Shoka, Kufa, Machir, Ace takes out a knife and gets rid of Asaph. Done. The Shaila is how did Hushim see it? And nobody else did. Everybody else was just like doing their own thing and waiting for Naftali. And, and, and Hushim is the only one that was able to like cut to the chase and, and see what was going on and see the big picture. and and this is Yaakov Avinu. Asa, what are you doing? So Reb Chayesh Levitz writes in one of the Sichos, because everybody else got used to the situation. The Hergel. Okay, Yaakov's staying here, so wait an extra couple of days. Chushim wasn't used to it. For Chushim, it was a shock. He didn't know what was going on. He wasn't used to it, so he was able to overcome. And he was able to push. The Chazonish writes, the most dangerous attitude in Avodah Hashem is not somebody who's an anti. At least he has emotion. The most dangerous attitude, says the Chazonish, is a Benoni Beshita. I am a Benoni. She Beshita. I'm not going to go lower. I'm not going to go more. This is what Kodesh Baruch Hu and I, you know, we're close. He knows me. You know, we're, we're friends. No, we not constantly need to move. We can't get used to who we are, no matter what age or stage we find ourselves. Remember the Rav Shachter likes to quote the Maharal Diskin. The Maharal Diskin, by never being satisfied. Maharal Diskin writes, the Gemara says in Kiddushin, Rashi quotes it in Parshish Mishpatim, that we pierce the ear of an Evan Ivri, an Evan Nirza. Why the ear? After six years, he says, I want to stay with my, my owner because this ear that heard at Harsinai, lo signo, that he went and stole, we pierce his ear. Okay? Says, <laughs> says the uh, Aral Disc, and I understand. We're piercing his ear because of lo signo, so why are we piercing his ear only after six years? Right away, we should pierce his ear. We send it into Avdus. Then in six years, then he says, I want to stay with my, my Adon. So then we pierce his ear. What do you mean? Pierce? We should pierce his ear then, six years ago. Says the Maral Diskin, no. He had a punishment already. He went into, became an Evan. He became an Evan. What's an Evan? An Evan is somebody who doesn't have responsibility. 
Everything's taken care of. Somebody else is the responsibility. What does he say after six years? He says, I like this life. I like it here. He doesn't feel that it's a punishment. He doesn't feel like he wants out. So the moral discon says you have to give him another punishment. Then we have to pierce his ear again because he obviously didn't get the message. This is not the purpose of life. The purpose of life is not to have things taken from you. The purpose of life is to feel more responsibility, more independence. We can't be comfortable with the state of our spiritual lives. That's key number one. Right? We could have more kavana during certain brachas at this time of year. Right? We should have extra kavana. Pick one. Pick one. Any of them. Any of those brachas. We should pick one to say, I'm going to try to have more kavana for the next three weeks. Okay, three weeks is a long time. I'm going to try to have more kavana tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's also too much. Shachris. One fila. One, that's okay. That's what we have to try to do. And the key is to make a plan like we just said. Have a plan and do it. We mentioned in the past the beautiful thought <laughs> that uh, Rashi says. You remember, the um, David Melech asks, Nasan Anavi, I want to build the base of Megdash. Shmuel, say for Shmuel. And Nasan says, okay, go for it. You can build the base of Megdash. Great. And what does, what happens? What does he say? I think I have the Tzukim here. Go build the base of Megdash. That night, Hashem comes to Nasan and says, Go tell David right now, he can't build the base of Megdash. His son's going to build the base of Megdash. Asks Rashi, why did Hashem have to wake up Nasan in the middle of the night and go tell him right now, go tell David? Wait tomorrow, till tomorrow morning, after Shul, while they're waking, taking off their tefillin, he'll go tell him. Hashem decided otherwise. You have to go right now in the middle of the night? Why right now? Says Rashi. It's a great Rashi to know. Shmuel Beis, Perak Zion, Pasuk Dal. Vahib alay lahu. Amr b'chadid bar papa. Amr l'akadosh baruch hu l'nasan. Ha'adam azesh ani m'shalecha cha etzlo. Mahir hu. The person I'm sending him to you is a mahir. He's a zariz. He acts with alacrity. If you don't go right now, the job will probably be half done. He's probably been on the phone with contractors all night. He's already ordered. He's already suppliers. This, he's already done it. Quickly, go! Because when David had a plan, David, when David wanted to do something, he had a plan and he acted upon it. And that's how we have to get out of our monotony. We have to make sure that we get a plan and we act upon it. Which, kav- which bracha am I going to do? What am I going to do for the next three weeks to get the base of English back? Something small. What am I going to do in this corona-filled world? What am I going to do to make a difference, whether I'm at home, whether I'm in yeshiva? Pick something. Right? Maybe it means to, to say karbanos in the morning with more kavana. Right? <laughs> Maybe it means to learn, I don't know, do something related to Avas Yisrael or Avas Chinam. Something, number one. Okay, number two. Number two, what we have to be inspired by. We have to recognize that each of us has a specific tachlis why Hashem put us here. One of the five tragedies that we're going to talk about tomorrow during Slichos is the Shviras Haluchos. Today's the day that the Luchos were broken. Moshe Rabbeinu smashed them, as we know. The last Rashi in the Torah, Yasher Kocha Chashesh But there's a Yalkut. There's a Yalkut that says, a Medrash, that Moshe did not smash the Luchos. The letters flew up off of the Luchos. And letters means, because they were engraved. So when the letters flew off, the stones got much heavier. They became full. Moshe dropped the Luchos. They were too heavy for him. That's what the Yalkut says. As Moshe Rabbeinu was going down the mountain, the Luchos got too heavy and he dropped it. That's Rev Salvechik. Isn't it ironic that if you fast forward to the second Luchos, Salachah, Shnei Luchos, Avanim Karishonim, Moshe Rabbeinu makes 
new luchos. He runs up the mountain, the Elisa Roshahar, and he goes to meet Hashem. Then it wasn't too heavy. Why, by the first luchos, when he was coming down, the letters flew off, he, it was too heavy for him. And he was going down. It's even easier. And by the second luchos, he, he was very strong, and he went up, and it was no problem. Writes Rav Salvechik in Yemezi Karon. Because what was the attitude and state of mentality of Moshe Rabbeinu? It's all in how you're feeling. To use Rav Salvechik's words, was he feeling like a gavra or feeling like a chefsa? When HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe Rabbeinu, raid shiches amcha, your people have sinned. Moshe Rabbeinu went down, he was depressed. He was sad. He was upset. He felt like everything is finished. He didn't have the koach, so to speak. He didn't have the mentality to go on. He dropped the luchos. But then, two months later, when he went up on Rosh Chodesh Elul, he was a man with a mission. He was a man who knew he had a shlichus. He was no longer in despair. He had a direction. He knew he was forgiven. He was a gavra. He wasn't just a chefsa. Life is about being a gavra. Life is about realizing we have a purpose. We have a tachlis. You ever hear impossible? Im. If you think if, if you think of all the possibilities, possible. Then it becomes possible. Im, Aleph Mem, right? Im, possible. If you think about Im, then anything can be possible. We just have to know that we have that shlichus like a Kaddish Baruch who gives us. Rav Kook writes, and one of the more well-known thoughts of Rav Kook on his sitter, right? We say it on Yom Kippur. Elokai, Achelon, Otsarti, Eni Chedai. Hashem, before I was created, I wasn't Rav Kook says, what does that mean? Before the moment that I was born, I didn't have a tachlis in life. None of us were supposed to be born in the, in the 1800s. None of us were supposed to be born a thousand years ago or a thousand years from now. We were supposed to be born at the second that we were born. That's when Hashem decided the world needs us. Because we have a purpose. On Yom Kippur, we say, now that we're born, we haven't fulfilled what we need to do. But Rav Cook says, that's the purpose. We have a job to do. We have something to do to make a difference. We should all have a bracha that in 50 years from now, we'll tell our children and our grandchildren what a crazy experience it was to live through Corona. What a crazy time it was. But we had a tachlis to be able to live at that time. But we have to recognize that Hashem believes in us and Hashem knows that we could do it. I've mentioned often, we say every morning, we say, thank you for giving me back my neshama. I'm sorry. Great is your emuna. Shouldn't it be my emuna? I have great emuna in you. No. Rabbi emuna secha. If you gave me another day, if you think I should wake up in the morning, it must be that you have emuna in me. You think that I have something to fulfill today. You think I have a purpose in life. You think I could be a gavra and not a chefsa. And everybody has their own purpose. And nobody's purpose is more chashev than the other ones. It's a beautiful Gemara and brachas. I love this Gemara. The Gemara and brachas says, do I have it here? Uh, do I have it? Yes. Brachas Yudzayin. Margala Bapumayu Durabana de Yavne. Oh, Hashkacha. The rabbis of Yavne used to say this. That means the Sanhedrin. I could call myself a rabbi of Yavne now, but this is the real Yavne. Ani Birya Vachaveri Birya. I'm a person, and my friend is a person. Ani Malachi Bayir, Van Hu Malach Basada. I'm in the city, he's in the field. I get up to work, he gets up to work. He does his work, I do my work. Lest you say I'm better. My job is more important. 
The Mishnah says in Menachas, Echad Amar Bevechad Amamit, Uvavashi Yichav Alibo Mashamayim. It's all the same Shamayim. Everybody has their mission. There's a great story. I don't think I've quoted it to you. In one of uh, Rebbitz and Young Rice's books, <laughs> she writes a story about many years ago. There was a story about the Special Olympics for Olympics for Special Children in Seattle, Washington. Naftali, awesome. Okay, it was a small blurb, and I would probably have missed it had my daughter not pointed it out to me. Here's the story. The story was about disabled children who competed in a race. When the whistle sounded, they started to run. Suddenly, one of the young boys fell, skinned his knee, and began to cry. When the others heard his cry, they stopped in their tracks, turned around, and went to his aid. One little girl who had Down syndrome bent down, kissed his knee, and said, here, this will make it feel better. The children helped the boy to his feet, linked hands, and ever so slowly, they all walked as one to the finish line. Could it be that these children know something that those who are running, uh, those of us who are running have lost? The Hulu. One must wonder who is the real disabled one in the story. It doesn't matter what the list is. Everybody has their own job. Everybody has their own purpose. But let's realize that each of us have a tafkin. Number one, we have to break the manani in the road and have a plan and do it. Number two, we have to recognize that each of us have a special purpose in life. Number three, we have to realize that every little thing we do makes a difference. Like we learned in kindergarten, another brick on the base of Migdash, every little one. Sometimes we think, what am I really accomplishing? Saying an extra, learning an extra Mishnah, doing a little thing. I think, I think Ellie, you asked me yesterday, right? One of my uh, pet thoughts that I like to quote, right? Rashi tells us in Shmos about Shifra and Pua. Shifra and Pua. Shifra, Misha Peres es Avlad, Pua, Poa es Avlad. These great women, Miriam and Yocheved, they used to coddle the baby and coo at the baby. And as Rabbi Yeruchim, why don't, why is this so significant that we call them by these names? They have Miriam, Yocheved, beautiful names. Why do we call them Shifra and Pua? To talk, that, that's the great thing that they did. They cooed at the baby, they coddled. Says Rabbi Yeruchim, paraphrasing, great people take little things and make them great. Little people could take great things and make them little. If you have a great person, they could take anything and make it like a huge, make it amazing. I once spoke to uh, Rav Judah Michelle, some of you familiar with Rav Judah, the holy Jew. So I once saw him one morning when I used to teach in, uh, in Rashid. So I went one morning years ago. And I said, we were Judah, how are you? He says, amazing. I said, oh, okay, great. Anything special that's amazing? So with him, it could have been not. He says, yes, I'll tell you. He says, I got up this morning. I said, Moda'ani. Put on my tzitzes. I went to Davini. I, I, I watched film this morning. I went, I said, Birch HaZatorah. I heard Kriya Satorah. Somebody asked me a kasha. I gave him an answer. I talked to Torah for five minutes after davening. I mamish had a full day already, and it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Everything, it's amazing. I'm like, wow, it's amazing. Because great people could take little things and make them great, because they're not little things. And the opposite, little people could take great things and make them little. You can have the most amazing thing and not be machshavit. We have to recognize. So Shifra and Pua, they, they took little things just coddling the baby and cooing with the baby, they realized they were saving Klal Yisrael. They realized that they were saving Jewish history. And that's what made them great. Every little mitzvah that we do is crucial. And we have to be excited about it. Remember of Nassim Adler? It's Wednesday night Sichos Chaim, so I allow myself to tell stories. Remember the story? He was on a, he was on a, uh, a wagon and he was the Rebbe of the Chassam Sofer. And he was in the wagon, it was freezing out, he was in the Chassam Sofer, and all of a sudden, one of the horses on the wagon broke its leg, and the driver said, you have to stay here while I go to the nearest town and get another horse. He comes back, and he couldn't find another horse, so he found a, I don't know, he found a cow, found a bull, and he starts hooking it up next to the other horse, and they were gonna be on their way. All of a sudden, Ernest Adler sees 
he goes out in the freezing snow, cold, starts dancing, starts celebrating. Amazing. The Chassam Sofer doesn't know what's going on. Maybe the cold got to his brain. It's frozen. What is he doing? He says, Rebbe, he says, you don't understand. I'm a city boy. I've never had the chance to do, of the opportunity to do the mitzvah of Kilai Behema, to not put two different animals on the same wagon. And now he's about to put the bull. I'm going to tell him, no, you can't do that. Kilai Behema. I'm not going to celebrate. I've never been able to do this mitzvah before. Because every little thing we do makes a difference. Every little preparation on Arab Shabbos, right? Every little mitzvah and the simcha that we have when we do it, right? Everything gives us amazing opportunities. <laughs> the Arachayim HaKadosh, maybe I'll just quote this. Again, it was his yard site on Tuesday. The Arachayim HaKadosh's yard site, Tesvav, Tammuz, a great one. It says in Akef, Kol HaMitzvah. Kol HaMitzvah, Sharanochi Mitzavcha, Yom Nishmul Asos. Do all the mitzvahs, Rashi quotes there. <laughs> Why does it say kol ha mitzvah? Should be kol ha mitzvos, all the mitzvos that you do. So Rashi says, oh, it means you have to finish the mitzvah. In a mitzvah, nikra ala misha gomra. Says the Archaim Akadish, different shot. Kol ha mitzvah. Mitzvahs are a package deal. Sometimes we focus on one, focus on the other, but we don't realize that every little mitzvah is to be focused on. We know all Kabbalah that every mitzvah is connected to a different limb in our body. Imagine you come to a doctor and you say to the doctor, you know, my, my left pinky is really hurting me. So the doctor looks at you and says, you got nine good fingers. You're good. Go home. And you say, no, no, my pinky is killing me. He says, you have nine good fingers. You have 10 toes. Stop complaining. Go home. Like, no, the pinky hurts. I don't care about the other fingers. You go find another doctor. We think we do a lot of mitzvahs. This one, eh, we don't need it. A little bit. I'm a Torah guy. I don't have to be a tefillah guy. I'm a tefillah guy. I'm a tzedakah guy. Kol ha mitzvah. Torah is a package. Every little chesed, every little little thing. Keep it up, aim. Many are stuck in their homes with their parents. It shouldn't be stuck. As they say, a Jew is never stuck. A Jew is sent. So we're sent. We're sent in our homes. And we have to recognize that it's a schus to be able to do each of the mitzvahs that we do. Moshe Feinstein always says, we have to try, even though it's hard sometimes, to look at it as a privilege and not as a burden to try to make sure we realize its opportunities. So number one, we have to break the monotony and break the road and make sure we start new kabbalas, little kabbalas, having extra kabbana in one fila, whatever it is. Number two, we have to make sure that we recognize that each of us has some type of purpose that we could do, that we have to accomplish in any way, and they're all equally valuable. And number three, every little thing we do makes a difference. And we have to be sure to do our best and to make sure that we recognize our potential. If we could do that, because Baruch will look down upon us. And like the Navi says in Zachariah, we want this, we want Shabbat Batamas to continue, but we want it to be a Yantif. The Navi says that all the four holiday fast days are going to be Chagim, Hiratzon, that this is the last one. I guess maybe we still have a little time for it to be a Yantif, but in case not, right, this should be the last time, and we should celebrate Shabbat Batamuz in Yerushalayim and celebrate Tishabav in Yerushalayim. Have a